Shalom, welcome to the Jewish View. My name is Rabbi Nachman Simon with the Chabad House of Delmar, together with my co-host Mark Warner to jbiztechphilly.com, statewide news service, and now columnist for the Jewish Press. All right, I'm having fun with all three assignments. My column in the Jewish Press is called Albany Beat, and I talk about how government relates to the Jewish community, or doesn't, as the case may be. But someone who does relate to the Jewish community mm -hmm. very well is our guest today, Senator Neil Breslin from the 44th Senate okay. District. Welcome to the Jewish View. I'm delighted to be here. So delighted good to, to be see here. you. Guys. Bye bye. Good to see uh, you again. It's good. Great yes. for you to be here. Mm. Um, well, not only Albany, but Delmar is. That's uh, right. And, right. And Rensselaer County and, uh, yeah, Albany County right. and Rensselaer County. So I wanted to ask you, uh, because we, we've had Senate, uh, legislators on after the session, what's your report card of uh, how this past session went? I thought it was an average session. Uh, the amount of bills we passed was down dramatically, but that's in part uh, because there's, kind of, there's relative gridlock in the Senate now. It's very close in numbers, who controls, and it was the first real full year for John Flanagan, I think did an admirable job for the Republicans. So uh, I think by and large the legislation we passed was good legislation and not a lot of the minutia possibly sometimes that we do do. Mm. So t what was your uh, impression, what, overall, what's your impression of the Independent Democratic Conference? Uh, do they I, serve I, a good purpose? Or? I, I, I really don't think they do. Uh, I've been opposed to them, that people pick teams. Uh, and our system in the United States, and in New York in particular, has been two generally teams, Democrat and Republican. And if you run under the pretense of being one or the other and then switch, I think that's somewhat what of a disservice to the voter. So if you choose to be other than in the Democratic Party, for instance, then go to the Republican Party. So the same with Simcha Felder, who conferences I, I think uh, Simcha and I have become very good friends. Uh, he's got a wonderful, wonderful sense of humor and a sense of balance yeah. that we need in the Senate. And uh, he didn't pretend at all. No. He said, I, I represent a constituency, and I will wait to see which side presents me with the best possible situation for my constituency. I've chatted with him about it. I have no problems with that because he told me beforehand. He, he didn't, told his constituents he, beforehand, too. Right. That's yeah. more important <laughs> than he told yeah. them yeah. than me. <laughs> and and uh, with the independent, you know, the IDC, I worked hard for several of them, went door to door, c contributed money, mm -hmm. and they turned around and said, no, we don't want you anymore. We want uh, another team, our team. Mm. And really, what they, if, if they had stayed as Democrats, that would have meant the Democrats controlled, Democrats would be chairman. Mm -hmm. uh, they would have more individual power, more power to present, I think, progressive legislation, uh, and this holds it up. Now, do the in, in the Senate, do the Democrats and Republicans pretty much vote on the same way on 98 percent of the bills? Or yeah, that's uh, that's misleading oh, okay. because. Uh, there are a lot of bills to uh, allow one more judge in a village of such and such, mm -hmm. or to uh, take a, a sales tax extender that had been in existence for 50 years, and you, you vote for it. Uh, I, I would say there's 10% of the bills we uh, take up are real substantive, core value, philosophical difference bills. And that's what you should call out right. and determine what percentage votes for and against. Have you ever done that? Uh, no, I haven't. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but, you know, it's a good question, and why haven't I? Uh, it would give a much better yeah. uh, uh, guide to where people stand on yeah, issues. I'm a stats type of person, yeah. and, and I noticed that uh, you are pretty senior uh, amongst yes. all senators. Right. Uh, you've uh, the, got the uh, fifth, well, you yeah, you you're sixth in seniority, or fifth right. in seniority. Or that, like that. that says two things, uh, that, and we don't know which, we know one of them is true. It means I'm getting older. And secondly, <laughs> it, it means that I should know more because mm -hmm. I've been there and I've experienced more. But that's a harder one to calculate than the age. But factor. looking to the future, <laughs> actually, it could be a very powerful position, what Mark is saying. I mean, the seniority, you could right. be 
ultimately the Senate Majority Leader. Well, I want to make sure I make a difference. And mm -hmm. I, I go there, I went there at more of an older age, and I have certain goals and, and that I try to live with and by, and that's to make sure that we have a fair, equitable system for education. You know, that's a really interesting question because I know it's in the news about, you know, like age limits there are on judges. And, you know, of course, we're on the Jewish view, so I have to bring in my rabbinical Jewish position. And there really isn't any. I mean, on the contrary, you know, elder, I mean, again, in society, oh, you're an old fogey, you're, you're ancient, you know, to be a teenager, they're the smartest people in the world. But really, in Judaism, goes the opposite. A person who's older has more experience and has right. more wisdom, is more settled in their thinking. So, you know, it's an interesting issue today. But I just, I'm from a Jewish perspective, it's not like, oh, you're 65, you're 70 years old, you can't be a judge, which is a law in, right. you know, oh, in New York State. And, and coincidentally, I have a brother who's reaching the age of 70. He's a Supreme Court judge. Yeah. Tom Breslin. Yes, Tom Breslin. And they and, say no more. I mean, that's and he's, right. got, he's going to be forced to retire. Well, he gets some extensions, but he'll, right. he'll be uh, on that extension period, and he'll be retired. And you, so, yeah, you mentioned your family. So your brother was in the judicial branch. You're in the legislative branch, and you had another brother, in Michael the, Breslin, in the executive, the executive branch. branch. <laughs> so you had all three branches covered, which and, was, I thought, pretty special. And it was a special day years ago, probably 15 years ago, that Albany Law School they have a Judge Jackson lecture series. And Judge Jackson uh, was an Albany Law graduate who became a Supreme Court judge and presided over the Nazi trials in Germany. Uh, sure. No, I a very know, famous yeah. and yeah, bright no, guy. I've heard of him. And they have an award each year, and they gave it to my two brothers and I, and we lectured oh, wow. on the differences between each area of government to see who had the hardest job. Mm -hmm. now, who do you think, has, the, the county executive, the judge, or the legislator. Do you think I would pick the legislator? <laughs> it's by far the county executive. Oh, by far, yeah. By far. The judge, I think, comes in third. Uh, so so if, you, if your brother Michael retired. Uh, which he did. Right. Yep. And then your brother Tom may, without the extensions, may right. have to retire. And then you are 74 years old. Right. I, Are you the youngest of the three? <laughs> uh, no, Tommy is. Oh, the, really? The, yes, okay. Tommy is. And I have other siblings as well. Oh, okay. So uh, are you looking at that? You know, I, I think that we're all concerned uh, that we want to make, make sure that we remain active, vital, yeah, and contribute sure. to society. And I don't feel, I feel better health than I did 15 years ago. So mm -hmm. I haven't even thought about that. Good. Uh, I yes. agree with you, Rabbi. I, I don't think age is a barrier. They have in a lot of states, term limits, right. the voter should be able to come in and vote against you. Right. And, and uh, if you have term limits, that means the staff people that you don't elect are there way beyond the legislators, and they get disproportionate power. They know where mm -hmm. everything's at. Now, the uh, average age in the Senate now is 60 years old. Wow. Now, when you came, it was probably a little... O older than that. Uh -huh. you I think you're probably there. right. Because they had Owen Johnson and they had a few others. Yeah. Were, John Markey. John Markey, yeah. So you had a, uh, so it's 60. Now you were 54 when you were first That's elected. Right. Yeah. You were my age. Yeah. So mm, this is interesting. Right. <laughs> it's not too late for me. No, <laughs> no not at all. <laughs> I think you have an advantage. But, you know, because, well, but the, average, the average yeah. number of years that a senator stays in the Senate is 10. Is well, it really? Yeah. You know, I guess I was going to address, because, you know, Mark and I probably have probably every politician in the Capital District literally on our show interviewing them. And, you know, coming from New York, so that when they're here in the Capitol, so we're our studios a block and a half away. Right. And it's very difficult for them, you know, to be away from oh. your family for two, three days. And I know a local politician says, I laugh at them, I have it easy. I go home every night, you know, and to be away for two, three days from your family for half a year, it, it's, it's difficult. 90 to 100 days living in a hotel or in a different setting. That's a tremendous burden uh, on people, and it's a consideration if they have a big family. Do I want to give up that interaction with young children, or my, what, my bride or my husband, mm -hmm. and do that? There are some people who live in Westchester who go home 
And uh, every day. Well, well, not, not, well, they go home for an event that might yeah. be on a session. I know day. George Latimer goes home frequently because yeah. he likes to campaign and he's right. always worried and does a great job. <laughs> you know, there are others, and they just don't find it an, an issue. It's the Long Island, New York City New folks, York City, and the Cattaraugus and the Western New York folks right. that really have Can't a commute. big issue. You right. know, but. You know, I think it would be a great vacation away from the family for two, three days. Mara, <laughs> well, I think you'd get tired of it very quickly. Probably. And, and I like the normalcy of being in my home and uh, being, you know, less than 10 miles and 10 minutes away from the capital. <laughs> yeah, so uh, well, maybe I'm just saying people, that contributes to people just cutting out. They had enough. I just read right. the problem. Oh, oh, is that what you, okay. Well, yeah. that's what I was thinking, because that maybe people well, don't want to stay that long. I did my service to the community, and it is a burden. Right. Yeah, there are people that traveling who, is a burden. who feel that way. Are you, um, what, okay, what, what would you like people to know about you that you think they don't know about you at this point? Oh, my gosh. I, I think because I live in Albany and I work in Albany, yeah. Uh, people know a lot about me and yeah. know who I am. Um, I think before I became uh, a senator, uh, I was attracted to the position because I was involved uh, as a practicing lawyer. So I, in theory, know things about the, the workings of the legislature. But I was involved in uh, projects, uh, homeless shelters, uh, halfway houses, and a lot of social action type areas. And I honestly didn't think we were doing enough. Uh, and I thought that we could contribute more. Um, I sometimes question that because we mm -hmm. still have an increasing number of homeless. I know just two weeks ago, we approached the number of one night of 60,000 homeless in New York City. Mm. Yeah, it's a tremendous. I it's, know. Uh, well, that's like this population almost, that's two thirds of the population of the city of Albany. Right. <laughs> Right. Just being homeless, just being out on the street. Even in Albany, we had one. Do you know the number of the Albanians that are homeless? Well, homeless there's, there's a tremendous. I was a before I became a senator. I was a vice president of the Interfaith Partnership for the Homeless in Albany, and so I had a great deal of contact with the homeless shelters. Uh, and at every given night, there's I bet upwards of a thousand. Yeah, that's why I was thinking a thousand, fifteen hundred. That's a lot right. of people that. Right. You know, even for our small city, like Mark's saying, you know, we're nothing compared to New York City. But, um, you know, a thousand people that don't have a place right. to go. And, you know. A lot of them are, are um, who have mental problems, uh, lack of skills, no jobs, have lost a job, have a major illness in their family, yeah. don't have control over whether they're homeless or not. And that's where we have an obligation. Which uh, committee in the Senate deals with homelessness? Is it housing? Or is it oh, there's housing, other? there's social services, there's a number of different kind of, I'm on, yeah. I'm the ranking Democrat on insurance, that touches it, there's health that touch it. Okay, um, wow, so mm -hmm. that, yeah, you are, okay, so you're ranking I, I guess on. another thing that a lot of people wouldn't, my friends wouldn't know because they don't want to hear about it, I, I just stepped down as the president of the National Conference of Insurance Legislators. I was the longest serving president all insurance law is state-based. So there's 50 sets of laws in the 50 states, and we have a national organization. And uh, I was named president uh, two and a half years ago and served as president for two years. And it really encompasses lots of things that are very uninteresting on a television <laughs> show, yes. very uninteresting if you're in any kind of a social gathering. Uh, but they're important. They're important to each state to make sure Can that we... I, I want to ask you this question because it's been sort of prevalent in the legislature. How do you rectify or, or justify or conduct yourself in terms of campaign contributions and what you would receive, what you wouldn't receive, and things like that? Because I know you're a highly principled person, right. so that's why I'm... I'm no, uh, I, I don't... Uh, I honestly... Uh, and and I, you have to have uh, campaign contributions. I try not to make any any direct ask of people that if they'd like to contribute and so I know I don't know as much about them as I should because I don't review all the contributions and I would, would never if they have a major issue some group has a major issue yeah. I, I just choose not to be soliciting dollars 
from them so in you, any way. Do you purposely avoid going to insurance companies for contributions? Uh, not, I don't go to them. You don't. They you do. Con they do contribute, right, but I on don't. their own. Yeah. 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 But you, perp you do you have fundraisers? I mean, because oh, I have fundraisers. You People do. can go to fundraisers. No, I'm but just I asking you. I don't pick up. Oh. Now, there's situations I've heard of of uh, a particular interest group will go into a legislator and and spend a half an hour talking about how they really need this passed, and then the, the interest group might leave. And then they get a phone call from that legislature, legislator a half hour later on the cell phone asking for mm. money. That's over the line. You shouldn't do that. Mm. Mm. And uh, you can get along without doing that. And, and uh, you know, we got to make sure that we do a number of things to clean up the way we do business. I, I think they should be government financed elections because mm -hmm. it takes it out of the hands of asking for money from insurance companies or other things. It also makes the challenger more competitive because you're more of an, an equal balance. That's one way to do it. And there's a second way of making sure that when we redistrict, we redistrict uh, uh, every 10 years. Mm -hmm. It's because the population changes in an area. And uh, the legislature decides how we redistrict. So in the Senate, it's mm -hmm. Republican. They just redistricted me mm -hmm. uh, a couple of years ago and gave me more Democrats. Not because they wanted me to have more Democrats. I'm surrounded by Republicans. Right. They each wanted less Democrats. Uh -huh. and, and in the assembly, they want more Democrats right. there, where sure. they have over a 50-vote lead already in right. terms they of numbers. But veto each, majority then, in the each house thing. approves the other houses. Yes. Yeah. And I think that uh, redistricting should done, be done by an independent body that determines and carves out competitive districts and those competitive districts uh, then would come up with good candidates and there'd probably be less seniority too. They, mm -hmm. They'd be more competitive. And you wouldn't have as we have in the House of Representatives in the United States, 80 elected who are just immune mm -hmm to being thrown out of office. They have such control of their offices, 80 of them. So they hold their breath and, and they, they say to leadership, I'm voting my way. Well, I think in this area, we had, you know, Stratton, McNulty, Tonko yeah. for how many, you know, for decades. Absolutely. Yeah, so this, yeah. is, this area is a safe democratic district. It is. It's carved out for the, whatever number you want to call it, CD 20, 21. You right. Know, so. I have to remember but, that, Mark, because they've <laughs> changed the number. Your district remains the same, but you have a new number. Right. And you're used to saying 42, which I had for a while, 46 I had for a while, <laughs> and now 44. And uh, it's easy, it would be easy to make a mistake on occasion. So what do you see as the big issue coming up next for the next session? Uh, I think there's education is always, always. at the top. 750 school districts, there's increasing problems in educating our children. Our children come from many foreign countries. Uh, we have an obligation to give them a good, solid education, and it costs more. Uh, families are less solid than they were in the past. What do, creates what, a greater burden. What do you see as a, um, as a solution for the tuition tax credit uh, issue? Uh, I'm taking that you're not really in favor of tuition. I, I haven't been, yeah. no. And I, I think it's uh, uh, to, I, I, I would like to see it separated more uh, and more targeted uh, towards specific things that you could say that's non-religious. Oh, okay. Uh, and, and they've done that in states very successfully. So uh, there is a model out there that you would feel comfortable with? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, and, and to, to take it away in other states, they'll, they'll use the busing of children. That shouldn't be considered in any way religious. We have to bus all of our children mm -hmm. and make it more inclusive with both the private and the public. Okay. So there's ways. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. And other issues that... Uh... Um, there, there's, uh, again, uh, the quality of the legislator, and, and we have to, uh, and the quality of the legislature has been under question, and we have to get rid of any sort of suggestion that they're doing something improper, mm -hmm. and we have to have strict, I was the first uh, piece of legislation to say, anyone convicted of a pension, you lose your, or convicted so of a felony, you lose your pension. 
it should, and it seems to me pretty simple. It does. Uh, and, uh, but you would, people then would say, legislator, but what about my family? Well, you should have thought it's your family beforehand. That's right. <laughs> and so it's a constant battle. But we have to be above reproach. We, we shouldn't be evaluated on the same as an ordinary citizen. If we're going to undertake that responsibility to the public, yeah. uh, we got to make sure that we do things properly. And if we don't do it, you know, my mother used to always say, you make your reputation by the people you hang around with. That's right. And if you're hanging around with bad people, you ought to say, oh, what am I doing here? The, uh, and I think the legislature, when I think of some of the quality individuals we've taken in in the last few years, it's a lot better than it was 10 years ago. Yeah, I'll tell you, oh, there is, it is better than 10 years mm. ago, yeah. Uh, if, in the Senate, I don't know, the assembly mm -hmm. sort of, I mean, this is like the first year, this past year, where no one was, uh, had a conviction or an indictment. I hadn't um, even thought of it. This past <laughs> year. You know, that, that's how low the bar is. You yeah. know, it's oh, a know. successful session that's when not, no one's been indicted. I, I don't <laughs> think I'm going to integrate that into one of my speeches uh, <laughs> when I'm bragging about how well we're doing. So, so um, but I just want uh, so so tell me about the um, you're of counsel your private practice you're, right. you're of counsel to the firm Barclay Damon yep is that Matt Damon no I oh. wish it was <laughs> that, that would be fun is it used a, to be Hiscock Barclay okay is it so it's Doug Barclay's firm Doug who's Barclay a former state senator and former ambassador del Salvador right and um, it's a, a modest. And his, uh, his son is the assemblyman. Uh, right. Right. Okay. Wonderful guy. Yeah. Uh, Will, and, Will, Barclay. Will Barclay. Yeah. And, and uh, I have a profession as a lawyer. I dabble in it now. I only spend a little bit of time in it. Mm -hmm. Because if I, if, I, if I, God forbid, if I wasn't reelected, uh, I would have a skill. And, and I have a skill that I can't be threatened about. No mm -hmm. one can say, if you don't do this, we're going to vote you out of office. I'm okay. I was okay before I got here. I'll right. be okay if I leave. Right. I don't do any, any practice that relates to anything, anything I do in the legislature. So I don't represent companies that have business with the legislature. I do estate planning and probate, mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm very comfortable doing it. No. If they pass a rule, because in the Constitution it says we're a part-time legislature. Yeah. If they pass a rule, you can't, I won't. No, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's the way it goes. Right. But they shouldn't make, make it retroactive and say, uh, no. you know, that, oh, we gave you a permission before, but now we're saying no, and you already did that right. before, so therefore you're guilty. I mean, which it's happens. A, no, it's prospective, so, not, not, <laughs> not, not retrospective. Right. Which has happened, because even like, I, I mean this in a different way, vain totally but the uh, cleanup of the Hudson River at GE in the 1950s the federal government gave them permission to do the dumping now fast forward 40 years and the federal government or 50 years the federal government saying oh no you know you, you have to go pay for cleanup that we gave you permission to do mm -hmm. right <laughs> So science changes. Science changes and, and philosophy And we're change. having that whole debate when we talk about global warming I sure as heck wouldn't want to be living on the shore in Fort Lauderdale right now. Okay. And I think all of us, when we experience some of the things, Sandy and Irene, yeah. and storms we've experienced, I never felt those storms when I was young growing up in this area. And I don't remember the heat being the way it is on a day like this, which should be fall. That I think there is a change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's, yeah. it's a slight change, but it's a change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, meteorologists will say that this is a short period of time in the expanse of what they look at in, in millennia. You know, right. So. <laughs> right. So. And we always see, I see them once a week, mm -hmm. uh, those glaciers melting, yeah, well, falling. Well, the, the polar bears uh, don't have enough to eat or enough right. places to rest. And, this, and I'm seeing thing. these geese that used to fly from Canada to Florida, yeah. and it would cost them less than it would for us to do the same. Now these geese fly from Canada to our area, mm. and I wish they'd go to Florida. Really, I didn't know that. Yeah. They stay just here. It's oh, yeah. warm enough for here. Right. I don't know. Yes. <laughs> so what was you, uh, I'm just trying to figure out the best way to, oh, on the casino gambling, you were in favor of Hard Rock Cafe going to Rensselaer. Yes, I was. Yeah. And could you tell me, like, uh, is this a blessing in disguise that, we didn't have a casino so close? I'd prefer we didn't have. I don't think they 
add, I, I think of it as a finite dollar. Yeah. And if it's a finite dollar, that finite dollar goes to rent uh, to, help the to help educate your children and take care of your family. And if you're gambling it, it's less money that you have to do that, to give your family a quality of life. Have you been to Hard Rock Cafes around the world, no? Uh, sorry. I have a whole pile of t-shirts. Uh, You've been to all Cafe. those Hard Rock Cafes? Oh, I love them. Yeah. <laughs> you do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you like the gambling? No, I like Hard Rock Cafe, which oh. is a, uh, which <laughs> I, is a I place. I don't even know the difference. <laughs> oh, it ha Hard Rock Cafe has memorabilia from okay. various musicians and uh, music uh, in the music industry okay. on their walls. So when you go to uh, any sort of entertainment venue, there's a Hard Rock Cafe that all, they all have different, uh, enter they, you know, because they go to these auctions and buy these things right. and they put them in the case yep. in, their re in their restaurants. So. Yeah. I actually think all these casinos being built you know. are going to have a difficult time because yeah. Everybody's doing the same thing. There's going to be a casino in Springfield, 100 miles away from here. Right. There's casinos in Pennsylvania right along the border in the, yeah. sub, in the southern area of our state. There's casinos in Connecticut. Right. There's casinos in New Jersey right. that incidentally have, have the name of Trump on them and they haven't done so well. And <laughs> well, he just I, licenses his and name. We all go he to, doesn't run them. <laughs> we all go to stores in the morning to buy a paper, a cup of coffee, and we see someone ahead of us buying Tickets, yeah. which I've never, and they, they're there, they go into their car, and they peel them off, mm. they win some, go back mm. in, or they lose it, they drive away sad, and I see what they're paying, mm -hmm. and it's a substantial sum mm -hmm. of money. It is. I agree and with you there. I've just, you know, if you has, there's fun is fun, you know, I mean, if you have the extra money to well, have yeah. a nice weekend, you know, I know people do do that, but when people are like down to their bottom dollar hoping to get a million dollars. Dollar and a dream. You know, that's <laughs> not, right. It's not I, right. I buy, on my birthday, I buy a couple of lottery tickets, that's it. Yeah, and, not every year, and not every year. Yeah, I've won you and know, you know, $50 if, if it's, if the That's it. Yeah. If the payoff is $700 million and I have a one in 10 billion <laughs> chance of doing it, I'll occasionally buy a ticket. You know, just, you know, help, yeah. help out the, yeah. you know. Education system. I don't look at the numbers the next day. I wait to make sure it's in another state. <laughs> I said, no, don't bother. I, I want to ask. I want to let the uh, viewers know that in this past session, you've had one, two, three, four, five bills signed into law by the governor. Right. Well, that's very I think good. That's, yeah. I that's think excellent. that's really good. I've generally been the Democratic leader in bills signed, and uh, over the years and in total, and there's several others that will still be signed. Still coming yeah. that haven't yeah. been there that you know are going to be mm -hmm. signed. Well, that Mazel Tov on that. <laughs> so uh, and then there are several bills which were one house, uh, four or five that are one house bills that which is the bridge uh, bill. The name of the bill. bridge. Name oh, the Charles Stern Memorial Bridge. Yes. Now, I thought I think I know his knew his son. Adam. Right, sure. He, uh, Phil Stack has it in the. Uh, in the assembly, assembly. And, we, and he we, can't move it. No, I, I passed it in the Senate. Yeah, I see that. And uh, I don't know what the problem is, but yeah. it seemed now, to me why that, why have a highway named after him? And what was his Charles Stern? Yeah, Phil Steck said that he was a fine you know, person with uh, yeah. excellent credentials, and I accepted his point of view. Oh, okay. I forget the specifics okay. of him. He's yeah. a he was a member of the Jewish community, right. and I knew mm -hmm. his. His ex-wife lived next door to me when I lived in Oxford Heights, so oh, wow. that's how I knew the Stern family. Right. And I, I grew <laughs> so. up within the Jewish community, right. growing up in Pine Hills in Albany. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a wonderful, wonderful age when I grew up. Yeah, well, it was very different back then yeah. also. We had many more Jews. So uh, what do you think would be your most significant bill from this past session that you really like? Oh my gosh! Uh, <laughs> I, I I never ever look at them that way. Oh, okay. I, I look at movements this is within. It's like your favorite child thing. Uh, no, <laughs> movements within. Did we uh, uh, did we push education sufficiently? Did we fine tune education sufficiently okay. to get little target groups of people who had needs in the insurance area? Are we making sure that health insurance is as affordable as it can be? Mm -hmm. And it certainly isn't. No. Uh, and uh, one of my major pieces several years ago was a, a piece of legislation dealing with uh, the health department, the insurance, the insurance department review increases in health care costs by HMOs. And the HMOs used to be able to file a sheet of paper and they get a rate increase. Mm. 
our legislation changed it to you had to prove that these rate increases were necessary. Okay. Little ones that you can't talk about because people don't want to talk about insurance. No. But, but they're important. They're important. They make important. a difference. Yeah. So what do you want to bring up that we didn't know enough to ask you about? Uh, no, it's, it's to emphasize what we did talk about. Emphasize that we have the ability uh, to not police ourselves in the legislature, but we have the ability to produce uh, a very thoughtful, honest, deliberative body. And, and, and we're moving in that direction. All right. Well, continued success. Thank you very All much. All right. Continue to success. You've been a great legislator and a friend of the Jewish community right. for 20 years. So we wish you added success in coming up. More and than all the 20 good years. Things. More than 20 yeah, years. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Yeah. Off. Another okay. 20. That's there you right. go. We'll okay. take another yeah. 20, but with good health. Thank you very much. Thank you. Do I point in the camera? It's all right.